this is Mike Check 95 We are continuing our Spider-Man review series, but we're jumping back into the two Venom films with Venom Let There Be Carnage. Eddie Brock has been meeting with Cletus Cassidy because Cletus Cassidy likes him. Reasons. Which, down the road, causes some issues. A lot of issues. Alien threat level 10 issues. We'll get to that in a second. Critics rate this film a 5.8 out of 10, which is a lot higher rating than the first film. But audiences rate this film an 8.4 out of 10, which is about the same as the last one. The budget of this film was $110 million, and they boxed off his back. $509.9 million. It boxed off as less than the last film. And this film had a smaller budget. Interesting. Why did they go for the cheaper route? COVID, probably. COVID. If you enjoyed this review, or any others that I've done in the past, or any that we'll do in the future that you foresee coming, like, share, and subscribe. Like I always say, join the madness that is Mike Check Productions. Join our Discord in the the link is down below in the box below me. Go click on it and join us so you can talk to me and say, hey, this review was good. Hey, this one was bad. Oh, hey, you should do this. Share your thoughts. I'd love to talk to you guys. Pros, cons, and comment time. Um, comments. Uh, Venom has developed some chicken friends. I noticed during the breakout scene with Carnage that he started having the little raptor purrs in his, like, growls and stuff, which I thought that was kind of odd that they went with the raptor noises in that scene but then again carnage is kind of scrawny and skinny and very crafty ish and destructive like a raptor would be and again spoiler alert detective mulligan gets a symbiote by the end of the film if you are very well diverse in the knowledge of the venom symbiote uh, comic book history detective mulligan is the cop that eventually gets the symbiote spawn known as toxin that symbiote spawned from carnage pros and cons i'm thinking about doing cons first just to get them out of the way uh i wrote this at the very end of the review but my number one con is quite obvious it's my problem with these films since i first heard about it this film is pg-13 now i kind of get it with the first one but how are you going to have a venom film with carnage in and we have it be PG-13. Again, Deadpool has a rated R film, but Venom still doesn't. Moving on, movie makers. Cassidy slash Carnage's relationship with Shriek doesn't really make sense, but at the same time, I've kind of thought about it just now. It kind of, for the story-wise, it kind of drives a wedge between the symbiote relationship between Cletus Cassidy and Carnage because Shriek is her power is to scream very loudly. That hurts symbiotes. And again, like on paper, it doesn't really make sense, but it, it just kind of drives a wedge between the two villains. It kind of confused me the first time I saw it in theaters, but just now thinking about it, it kind of does make sense if they're trying to drive a wedge between Cletus and Carnage and they're trying to show that Venom and Eddie had a better bond. Again, I'm just now thinking about this while on camera, making my con kind of null and void. The runtime of this film, again, I don't know what it is with Sony having to go back and reshoot an entire movie again. Both Venom films feel very, very short. Like, they feel like they could be an hour long because, like, it's like blink and you miss it. I still say that if they added another 30 minutes to this film, it would be great. It would, like, help beef up the story more. But again, this film was made during the period of COVID. I'm surprised some films that are out now survived COVID and still had the full feature length that they were trying to go for. It didn't really feel as choppy as the first film. This one felt fluid. It kind of feels like the way people feel like Jurassic Park The Lost World. It doesn't really feel like it's part of the main story. It feels like a side mission. But at the same time, this is a continuation of from the first story, it's just the runtime makes it feel like it's a side quest when it's not. I didn't know what else to call it. Uh, the tonguing scene that Carnage does to the cop. I know it's supposed to make Carnage look evil, look like an evil bastard. 
that just doesn't give a damn about anything. But if they're trying to go for making viewers uncomfortable, they nailed it for me. I didn't like it. My last two cons are actually ones that actually really don't make any fucking sense. And it... Yeah. Cassidy has Carnage internet search for Shriek's location at a... Was it a gas station? Or a, like a market or something? But um, he has them like symbiote hack into this computer to find her location. And the screen shows where she's at and why she is there. She's at Ravencroft basically because she's a huge threat and her threat level is Sonic level threat 10. Now you see, symbiotes aren't stupid. I feel like in an actual common sense situation, Carnage would say something to Cassidy saying, hey, like, I know you like this chick, but is this really a good idea to have the screaming bitch sit next to you? To me, that just really didn't make any sense, and I didn't really rage about it. It just made me really scratch my head. Um, and my last one on the cons is... Okay, so... St. Estes was supposed to be a home for children who weren't wanted by their parents. I don't know how old Shriek was, she was obviously a child. This is basically like asking the same age-old question when it comes to the first Halloween film. How did Shriek learn how to drive? I mean, if you can figure out where the gas and the brake pedal is, and the steering, it's common sense. But... She knows how to drive. Moving on, because I don't want to tear this film up anymore, because I actually still like this film. Uh, pros. Um, again, Eddie's relationship with Venom is very great, very funny, very comedic, very story-driven, very heart-wrenching, very heartwarming. It is fantastic up, down, left, and right in this entire uh, film. It kind of, their relationship in this film, because this is what they were actually going for it. Their relationship is kind of like one of those live reality TV shows you see on MTV nowadays that took away all the music videos. It was done very well, and actually this writing is actually really, really good for this film. And another uh, pro I'd like to say on this is that, again, with what content that they had given to us and had to deal with, they did a great job. Again, you don't need Spider-Man all the time to tell a great Venom story. There are plenty of Venom stories that you can do and create your own origin story from it. No fake wig. The pro, the, the post credit scene with Woody Harrelson with a really fake-ass afro wig at the end of the first Venom film was not that great. There's gonna be carnage. I'm glad that they actually let him use his actual, actual natural hair. Venom actually doing detective work in this film was actually pretty entertaining. The cheesy comedy that ties in with like the relationship and everything was great. Carnage's breakout, besides the tonguing scene, was actually good. I liked it a lot. It showed the amount of just destruction and no care at all in the world that Carnage has for like human life and everything. Uh, when Venom breaks away from Eddie and goes straight to the Mardi Gras party, where he feels like he's part of the group or whatever, that was actually pretty funny and entertaining. Um, the car slide that um, Cassidy does going into the gas station or uh, discount market was actually pretty good. It's just when someone... I don't know if it's actually possible to do that. If it is, like, it's probably really hard to do, but it's also kind of funny. Nice to see she Venom back again. The CGI is improved a lot, I would say. From the first film. The CGI was a little hiccupy in the first one, but this one they touched it up and made it look a little bit better. There were still some spots here and there that were like, uh, but nothing to really gripe or bitch at. The church battle was fantastic. I loved the entire church battle, and the fact that Dan actually had a hand in trying to help Venom out in this movie was actually funny as well. And then, of course, to kind of end our probes here, tying into the next review that's going to be coming up, is the end credit scene. That is the end credit scene that we fans have been waiting for 
for probably several years to get Tom Hardy's Venom into the MCU. Now it's time to get into the ratings of this film. I love this film. With the couple two cons that didn't really make that much sense, I feel like I'm nitpicking too much. It drops the rating a little bit, but not by too much. Because again, this film is fucking amazing. I would have to give this film an 8.2 out of 10. I wish I could put it higher. I really wish I could. It's just, if the writing for those two scenes with the Carnage internet search and Shriek knowing how to drive was kind of written a little bit better. But, 8.2 out of 10 still a good rating. The next time you shall see me for the Spider-Man reviews will be the final Spider-Man review of the Spider-Man series. The end game of all of these Spider-Man movies. Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm actually very excited to watch that film again. I might actually shed a tear this time around, like I almost did in the theaters. This is Mike Check 95 hoping that you enjoyed this review, and we'll see you in the next one. Signing